when it comes to managing glaucoma, there's always been an objective test is always a sort of a, a goal that people move towards. So as if you use OCT, for instance, you can image the retina and look to see if you've lost nerves or if you've got the characteristic signs of glaucoma around the optic nerve head. So with an OCT, you're looking for structural loss that's associated with glaucoma. And that can be problematical. If you're doing fields and visual acuity measures, you're looking for functional loss, a sign of glaucoma. And the, the bottom line is that functional loss is actually you're measuring the damage to the visual system that the patient perceives. So it has an inherent advantage in the sense it's measuring what you're trying to preserve. And certainly when it comes to monitoring change over time, it is very good, particularly in the more advanced stages of glaucoma, when functional change is, can be catastrophic and very difficult to differentiate. So, so if you have advanced glaucoma, how do you differentiate from very advanced glaucoma? Well, functional measures can do that very easily, whereas structural measures find that very difficult. So it has a very significant role in the management of glaucoma. I think the issue with structural measures and the issue with functional measures is that you're really trying to differentiate the abnormal from the normal. And when you look at structure, you know, if you look to say the thickness of the nerve fiber layer, then there's a wide range of normal values. And therefore, if you have somebody with a particularly thick nerve fiber layer, they're gonna to have to thin down a lot before they come outside normal limits. Now the answer to that is, you know, instead of looking at, at maybe comparing them to, to population norms, you compare the right eye to the left eye, so you're comparing within the individual, or you're comparing one part of the retina with another part of the retina and looking at differenti differentiating or differences between areas. But the same applies to functional loss. You know, you're looking at does this eye differ from the other eye, in which case, you know, um, we should, it should ring an alarm bell. So you're looking for differences between the eyes or differences between different parts of the eye, like the superior field versus the inferior field. Every clinician I know that is an expert on OCT and glaucoma says you really need structural and functional measures. And it's the combination of the two that's important because there is no doubt that sometimes you can see structural changes that seem to occur before functional loss. And in some cases you find functional loss that you can't differentiate, where you can't differentiate a significant function, structural loss. So the two need to be done and, and they have different roles and they augment each other. But when you look at neurological loss, um, at one time, you know, the only way you could decide where a tumour existed was to do parametric tests and other tests to try and see where the deficit was. So as if, if you knew that they had a hemifield defect, you could locate it within the visual pathways. But I mean, that has just disappeared because now we can image the brain with MRI scanners and we can tell you exactly where the tumour is and we can tell you so much more. So to some extent, the neurological need to do a field test has disappeared because we can locate and precisely define where a tumour is without a perimeter. Their function in neurological disease is largely to understand the disability that follows from, say, a stroke in a patient. So as you might do a field test in somebody who had a stroke and having vision problems in order to decide where it was they can't see and how you can you know, focus um, training on developing the use of the areas they can see. So yes, yeah, so you need it, as it were. I mean, a good example is that, that if you had a field defect that was to the right of fixation, then this is a problem for reading because you, you move into the blind field. So you train people to read backward, you turn the book upside down and they read the other way and they can do that quite successfully. Uh, do you feel that a clean visual field infers a clean bill of health for the brain? Wow. I mean, I think a, a clean visual field implies that the visual system is functioning well. Having said that, really, if you want to evaluate the visual system, you need to evaluate the fovea, which is the visual acuity, and the field will tell you what the rest of the retina is doing. As well. So um, having said that, we normally only test the central 20, 30 degrees, and clearly the visual field goes out to nearly 90 degrees in, in most directions. 
so we don't normally assess that. But, but I think if you've got a good VA and you've got a, a full field, a full central field, then you have a very high level of, of functional vision.